Welcome to Wheels TV On Demand. We're wild about wheels. Hi, I'm Laura Bird here at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, California. If a great car has endured for any length of time, it likely has a few terrific stories behind it, and the Ford Thunderbird is no exception. First produced in 1955 when gas prices were about 25 cents a gallon, the T-Bird underwent dramatic changes on every level throughout its life, giving it a history and a heritage as colorful as it is convoluted. In 1953, when General Motors unveiled its daring new Corvette, the Ford Motor Company was caught flat-footed. There wasn't anything in their upcoming product line with which to answer. Soon, the biggest priority at Ford's Dearborn headquarters was to rally the troops and answer GM's sports car volley with a two-seater of their own. Rather than go with a clean sheet of paper approach, which would have taken too long, Ford took a less adventurous tack in creating their sports entry. The concept seemed to make sense. About, uh, oh, it would have to be around 1952 or so, uh, we had been toying with uh, different designs for sports cars because of the fact that they were getting very popular in this country. So we had already developed the 55 Fords. And the idea was to really give you a scaled down version of a 55 Ford. So they could use things like headlight bezels, things of that nature on the little bird and component parts. So really what it amounted to is uh, they, they, took a, they took a 55 Ford and dehydrated it. By 1955, Ford was ready to offer its new Thunderbird to the public. The styling was clearly derivative of Ford's full-size cars, but that didn't seem to bother the hordes of enthusiastic buyers who snapped up every T-Bird Ford could build. Chevy's Corvette was anything but a refined sports machine with a six-cylinder engine, side curtains instead of windows, and a cramped interior. The T-Bird was a much more user-friendly car with a powerful V8, real side windows, and a roomy interior. It had trumped the vet on its first try. Little changed on the T-Bird through 1956 and 1957. But in 1958, the T-Bird was given a stunning makeover with more bodacious styling and the controversial addition of a rear seat. Sports car purists recoiled at the notion, but T-Bird sales took off. Over the next three decades, the T-Bird evolved through a relentless pattern of changes. Its mission statement seemed to be at the mercy of management changes and shifting dynamics within the marketplace. They got bigger, they got smaller, they sold well, they sold poorly, and then as the 1990s were slipping into their final days, so did the T-Bird. Ford's decision to end T-Bird production came as a blow to millions of T-Bird owners and admirers who viewed the car as a survivor even when its target audience was unclear. Which is why in 1998, when Ford announced its intention to bring back the T-Bird and published artist renderings in numerous automotive magazines, those hopelessly hooked T-Bird fans had reason to rejoice. The new bird will look like this. Touches of the old mixed with contemporary styling cues that Ford hopes will give the new T-Bird a personality of its own while still acknowledging its original counterpart. And Ford hopes that this new T-Bird will at the very least create as much of a stir at the Ford showrooms of today as that racy little two-seater did 45 years ago. From the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, California, I'm Laura Bird. Thanks for joining us. Explore your passion for automotive entertainment with Wheels TV, the first television network dedicated to our automotive and motorcycle lifestyles. Get our free newsletter on wheels at wheelstv.net. Like everyone who loves to drive or lives to ride, we're all wild about wheels.